This is John. Hello, hello, and welcome to The Sinners. Hello, hello yourself. I know my fans are really excited to get to ask you questions. So oh, fantastic. Let's get this one out of the way, because now we have to ask everyone, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, you're going to die. Uh, vanilla chocolate chip. Oh, it's so good. It is good. It is good. So, but uh, I love the vanilla, but I like the little bits of chocolate that are just kind of peppered throughout, you know. It just so, makes it perfect. It does indeed. It really does. That's why I prefer it. It's the closest thing I can get to being perfect, and I'm so far away that <laughs> I, I need every bet I can get. <laughs> All right. So we also want to ask, are you a gamer yourself? Because we know you do a lot of video game voices. Um, you know, I am not a gamer. I, uh, my son is a gamer and, uh, I'm an eater and a drinker. <laughs> um, I don't game as much. I, I, I'd like to though. I'd really like to start getting into it. So if you can recommend any games, that'd be great. They do have a game called Pong. It's a good starter game. Pong. Now, okay. I should say I used to be a gamer, like when games were simple. And there was left, you know, more left to the imagination. That's when uh, games were really something, you know, not this, all this fancy, dancy, you know, here, let me, let me just create everything for you. And there's nothing left to the imagination. No, I played Pong. You wouldn't believe the adventures I went on playing Pong. <laughs> I mean, my character was, looked like a stick, but he was amazing. Well, if you like creating your own adventure, you should try Minecraft sometime. Yeah, my son plays that. I think I'm, maybe I'll have to do something like that so I can at least get, uh, you know, have somebody kind of help, help me along, you know. But um, anyway, but I do enjoy them. And I think, uh, I don't know when this is. Is this live or is this, is this being going to come out later? 100% live. I can give you the oh, link okay. if you want to see the chat and everything. Uh, yeah, because what I may do is just throw out a thing to tell people to go there on Facebook real quick. Here you go. All right, go for it. I put it in the Skype for you. Oh, okay. Hang on. Let me <laughs> see. Not only am I not a gamer, I'm challenged. So let me see if I can. Ah, there we go. Okay, hang on here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm seeing if I can send this Twitch TV. You know what I'll do? I'll just do this. Okay. Oh, well. I'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Professionalism. We're all about That's that me. here. <laughs> oh, I see. I got a down. I don't have the app. Does it need an app? Uh, are you, you, are you uh, doing it on your phone? Yeah. Oh, you might need an app. I thought you were doing it on the computer. No. Yeah, you do. That's okay. I'll um. go back to I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll do it like this. Okay. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. So, what's going on? Well, we've got some fans with some questions for you. Okay. Well, I hope I have some answers that are acceptable. <laughs> so, the first one is from Archangel, and he asked, how is it voicing Salvador and flank steak? Wait, does that actually say flank steak? <laughs> yes, flank steak. That was a minor character I did in Borderlands 2. Uh, Salvador was the main character, and, and of course, he was... He was tremendous. I mean, it was a, uh, it was such a joy to do. I'm, I'm disappointed that he doesn't come back in in the the latest uh, Borderlands offering. But you know, that's the way it goes. Um, but he was he was great. It was very hard on my voice because uh, his you know he talked with such gusto and force like this, and everything was really big, and um, so it was hard. But uh, it was certainly worth every bit of it. It was it was a blast. <laughs> I think everyone's happy you just did the voice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're welcome. All right, gaming writer asks, who do you prefer voicing, heroes or villains? Villains. Although, I don't, I, is Salvador a villain or a hero? I mean, he's, you know, I don't know. But in the games that I've done, I, villains are always more fun because you get to play around with the voice a lot more. You know, heroes are always just that, come on, everybody, let's go. You know, they're the little hero, and the, the, the villain is always, um, 
just has more characters to their voice. I, I've done some characters, though, in some anime and stuff like that that were sort of the hero. They were the main character, I should say, even though they were not necessarily a um, upstanding example of humanity's finest. I mean, they were, you know, they had a lot of problems and a lot of issues, but at the end, they, they turned out to be, you know, good I guess, or not good, but just, you know, uh, they were just the hero. I mean, they saved the day and they, they showed they had a little bit of a heart. Uh, so you prefer the anti-hero type. I prefer the anti-hero. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And I can see liking to play the villain because you get to overact and be really dramatic. Absolutely. I mean, it gets there. Like I said, there's a lot more character you get to do with your voice. You know, you get to, you know, you're not just stuck in the, all right, everyone, let's gonna we're gonna save the day. You know that the it's all and it's always a young kid too. You know, either a girl or a guy that's always the hero, and that's just not in my vocal range. <laughs> so you know, I'm playing the characters and I you know have voices like this and talk like this and you know do stuff like that. So it's it's a lot more fun for me. Do you ever throw out your voice doing those kinds of voices? Absolutely, absolutely. I did a, a character uh, named Gozaburo for. Um, my Bride is a Mermaid, uh, it's an anime, and every line he did, he yelled. I mean, literally screamed his guts out. And Ian Sinclair was the director, and we couldn't uh, we couldn't do more than about 15 or 20 minutes at a time because my voice just couldn't handle it. It was, it was just, you know, it just ripped apart. So um, that was that was a tough one. Right. And, and, Sal- and Salvador was tough, too. I mean, I, I would... I'd go up to, uh, I live in Houston and I would go up to Dallas to record and, um, I'd go up there for a few hours. And by the time I'd leave, I'd be, you know, I'd walk in and go, Hey everybody. And by the time I'd leave, it was like, see you later. <laughs> so it was, it was a little tough. You guys really need hazard pay. I'm telling you, man, you really do, you know, cause eventually that stuff will wear on you. If you're getting, if you are stuck doing that the whole time, it'll, it'll, you just can't sustain it. So yeah. I'm all over hazard pay. <laughs> Probably give you a soda and a bag of chips, but that's all right. <laughs> Take what we can get. Oh, the soda's just going to make your voice worse. <laughs> I know, right? It's more of a hazard. Um, so, Archie, okay. Archangel asked, how did you get into anime? Um, I was, uh, like I said, I'm from Houston, and I'm very uh, fortunate in that Back in the mid-90s, early to mid-90s, there was a young company here called ADV Films that was uh, doing dubs, I mean, excuse me, subtitled anime. And uh, one day, Matt Greenfield and John Ledford just got together, they're the owners, and quit their jobs and said, hey, let's just try to, let's not only subtitle these, let's dub them into English. And they did, and about 1996 was when I started, and um, I met a guy at, um, I was doing a comedy act called the PC Cowboys, which is a uh, politically correct country and western band, and we were doing a comedy show, and uh, our opening act was this guy named Jason, and um, Jason Lee, and uh, he, we were talking backstage, and he said, yeah, I do a lot of voiceover. And I was like, really, what do you do? And he goes, I do anime. And I was like, well, what's that? Because I was doing a lot of commercials and industrial films and had done some, you know, on-screen movies and had done a little, had some success with that. And, you know, things were going pretty well. Well, he told me about this anime, and I ended up getting an audition with his wife, Amanda Wynn Lee. And um, she cast me in uh, Golden Boy, which was my very first show. And uh, which was a lot of fun. I, uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. And then, um, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. I started doing, uh, as the studio in Houston grew, I grew with them and sort of got a um, uh, reputation, I guess, for um, being able to do a lot of different voices. So whereas... Uh, um, a Chris Patton might do the lead in Razafon or, um, uh, or, or Spike Spencer does, you know, the lead in, in, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion or Evangelion to those in the know. Um, 
I was doing the the bit parts and then later on bigger bit parts and and that kind of thing. So I was just I was fortunate that um, I was in a town where anime was thriving in the production side of it. And um, I happened to, you know, just had an affinity for using my voice and it just kind of worked out. So that's kind of it. It's kind of a long winded answer. But I am a voice actor. So what do you expect? (laughs) So I kind of want to go back to the politically correct cowboys thing what i've not heard of that before <laughs> yeah um it was a band uh, a buddy of mine mike vance who's also done uh, a fair amount of voiceover in uh in anime uh but he and i started it it was uh, we were we were these characters from bridge city texas and we uh made up these characters and and wrote politically it was kind of in the you know the height of political correctiveness and and that kind of thing and so we just thought, well, what are two things that don't really go together? And it's politically correct and cowboys. So we thought, uh, let's mix the two. And we wrote a bunch of songs and mm-hmm. uh, did a couple of CDs. And um, uh, you can actually find them on iTunes. If you look up PC Cowboys on iTunes, we're on there. So uh, it's, it's, it, they're, you know, they're humorous. They're comedic songs like um, Idaho, but I lost her to a welder named Foster. <laughs> So anyway, that's that's kind of uh, kind of the deal there. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we did it for, you know, I want to say about well, I did it for about nine or ten years, and then um, it just you know started to it, it was time to move on to something else. So I did, but I I, I kept up doing the uh, um, the voiceover work because I love it so much. I'm gonna have to look uh, that up on iTunes later. <laughs> Yeah, please do. Spread the word. I'd like to sell more than five CDs. There you go, guys. Everyone that's a sinner, go check that out. That's right. Go do it. And if you send it to me, I'll even autograph it. There you go. Um, Veridan asks, do you do voices for your son, like singing Happy Birthday and any of the voices you've done professionally? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, well, I did once. I did uh, Happy Birthday to him as Salvador, and I scared the, the, the crap out of him. So I, I've been banned by the courts from doing that so <laughs> no um you know we uh yeah i have fun doing them doing voices and stuff like that but it's also you know um i'm not doing them all the time and you know they're i mean every now and then when they were younger especially they go dad do this voice and do that voice and so i'd you know play around and we'd have fun with it but i don't uh i don't do it too much you know it's i don't want to scare them <laughs> Again, I play all these bad people, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to associate bad with their dad. Oh, so. but we love the bad people here. Well, that, that the bad people. <laughs> the bad. No, the bad people are the best. In fact, the very ver- first convention I did this year was a convention called Evil Con in in Tampa, Florida, and it centered around all bad guys, you know, sinister types. So that was a lot of fun. Had a good time doing that. But yeah, the bad people are the best. They get a bad rap. Now, are you going to be doing any more cons uh, toward the end of this year to the beginning of next year that you can give a shout out for? for the fans um, that I am doing you? one more convention this year called Metacon, which is in Minneapolis. That is this weekend, as a matter of fact. And I'll be there with a bunch of great, great uh, actors. Um, and then that's, so far as I know, that's it for me this year. But I'm hoping to uh, I'm hoping to really ramp up next year. I've only done a few this year. Um, I uh, just a lot of things were going on in my life, and I had to kind of just curtail um, my convention appearance. But I hope to do a bunch next year. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I play another evil dude in a new movie that's coming out called The Perfect Con. Uh, uh, K H A N con, and it's a uh, it's a CG movie that myself, Kyle Jones, um, and Jay, um, why can't I think Jay Hickman, <laughs> the three of us. Uh, Kyle is currently a director at Sentai Films, and um, we did a project a while back, and we're just now getting it released. But it's uh, a CG film, uh, so it's not anime. But it is a a funny, funny movie, and we got the rights to it. So we rewrote the script and made it a a comedy as opposed to an action movie. So it's an action comedy. A a come action. A come action. That's great. 
some action film. And um, anyway, it's got Vic Mignogna and it's got Chris and Greg Ayers and, you know, it's got a, a, a good array of folks and uh, Mark Laskowski's in it and uh, Shelley Black and uh, a lot of actors from the Houston arena. But anyway, it's uh, coming out hopefully towards the beginning of next year. So keep your eye out for it, sinners. I'm going to have to look for it to review. The perfect con. Yeah, our goal is to sell a million downloads. Well, I know you've got a bunch from us. I can well, thank you, you thank you. Yeah, I, it's just something that, you know, it's so much fun because we've done stuff like this before where we've we've taken live action movies and redubbed them, you know, like we did one um, uh, called Lake Texarkana Gamera, which was a Gamera movie. He's a turtle. Uh, in, the, in the pantheon of Japanese monsters like Godzilla and Mothra and all that, uh, Gamera is the guardian of the universe, and he's a giant turtle. And so we redubbed it, though, as a bunch of uh, Texas rednecks. <laughs> and um, then we did another movie, a series of movies. In fact, we're getting ready to start the third one. They're about Japanese truck drivers, and they're sort of, they're sort of exploitation films. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a funny story um, in just a minute, but... Um, we, uh, it's about this truck driver named Nami and, and she drives a deco truck in Japan, which is this kind of decorated, uh, van truck, you know, anyway, we, again, we did it as a bunch, we kept the story, but we, we redubbed it as a bunch of Texas rednecks. In fact, it features quite a bit of PC cowboy music, but the name of the movie. Huh? Um, I don't think he's really, he put us on hold. Uh, technical difficulties, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'll ask him the questions, guys, when he comes back. <laughs> uh, let's hope he sees that. He kind of put us on hold. Oh, all right. Uh, he had to go take care of something. No, uh, called it and drop. He had to go take care of something. So, uh, I know you guys are enjoying it. I've got your questions right here so I can see them. So I'll have to cut this part out. This is a first. Um. Be back in a moment, guys. Hopefully. Either that or he just wasn't enjoying us and just left us. Alrighty, let me re reinitiate the call here. <laughs> Hello? Hello! I'm so sorry. Sorry. Right. I, I told you I was technically challenged early on in the uh, <laughs> deal. So, I don't, anyway, I don't know where we, we abandoned there, but uh, anyway, the movie is called Big Bad Mama San. <laughs> and, um. <sighs> Hang on. Okay, it's a buddy of mine calling me. Um, anyway, I don't know where I was. So, Smokey and the Bushido is the next one. And uh, anyway, they're sort of, um, they've got some, you know, sex. It's not porn, but it's got some nudity and some suggestive situations and whatnot. Anyway, I was at a convention um, in Florida earlier this year, and we were having a screening of the movie. And it had been a while since I saw it. I've seen it. And I just forgot to give, you know, it has to be an 18 or over panel type of thing. And we're watching the movie and all of a sudden this like sex scene comes on. And I'm all this guy leans over and he goes, you know, there are kids in here. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so I had to run up and jump in front of the projector and just apologize profusely and Oh, it was a mess. It all turned out okay, but still. All the while the sound effects are going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so We've had that happen when we stream movies, too. <laughs> I've really got to be a little more careful about it, you know. But anyway, so other than that... <laughs> That's probably one of the best stories we've had in an interview. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it was funny. I'll give you that. It was funny. 
and I, and at least it turned out right. And it was a good, great convention too. So, well, let's hope you come back again next year because I'd like to to uh, see you in person. Well, now, where are you all? Uh, we're near Tampa. So. Oh, you're near Tampa. Okay, this was in Daytona. So, yeah, well, there's a, a good far. there's a good chance I'll be there. There's, you know, the thing about Florida is I love is that. Um, uh, I've did. I think I only did like seven conventions last year. Six of them were in Tampa or in Florida. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, they were all in Florida. I'm doing. I'm doing one in Minneapolis. And yeah, I mean, it was one in Florida. It's just amazing, you know. I've done a couple in Orlando, a couple in Tampa. Um, in uh, uh, Daytona, so uh, you guys, uh, Florida is a very con-friendly state. So, well, the kids around here have to do something other than watch the old people walk around. Yeah, exactly, for <laughs> sure. So anyway, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I've got a lot of great con stories, but you know, they're they're. I love conventions. I love doing conventions. I love them. I love them. I love them. Because what's great about them, really, for me, is that, um, you know, it's a chance for you to uh, get together with the fans and, and, you know, meet them and greet them and say hello and, you know, just do everything in person. I mean, I love interviews. Don't get me wrong. But it's, you know, when you get to meet people that are fans of your work, that's really a huge compliment as an actor to receive, I think. So here's, here's a question talking about cons. What has the weirdest, weirdest thing people have asked you to autograph? Hmm. The weirdest thing I've had somebody ask to autograph. So, uh, you know, their boob. Why does everyone say that? <laughs> well, because, um, I can't really tell you what it is. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> No, but the weirdest thing I ever had somebody ask of me at a convention was they asked me to, if I would lick their hand. Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, new. No. Okay. Congratulations, you win the weirdest uh, yeah. con request. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had a lot of interesting things happen at a con. I One time I was at one in uh, Wisconsin Dells, up in Wisconsin, and this guy came up to me, and I was signing autographs, and I saw him kind of coming in from the corner of my eye, and he was in this really pretty uh, mech, you know, type outfit that clearly he built. It wasn't something he got off the rack at, you know, Sears. And um, he uh, he ran up to me, and I'm sitting there at the table, and he looks at me, and he goes, I don't care what anybody else says. I am your number one fan, and I'm about to go fanboy on you. <laughs> okay. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> so uh, he was, uh, he was fun. He ended up being a really nice guy, actually. But it was just a, a, I've never heard I'm about to go fanboy on you. So anyway. They'll need to start yeah, putting the little uh, security buttons on your tables. Yeah, exactly, right? No fanboying <laughs> on me. Um. I will tell you the weirdest thing I ever got at a convention. Um, and if you, if you, anybody who's listening has ever been to a convention where I've been to you, I, I know you've heard this story, but it certainly bears repeating. And I hope I don't offend any of your listeners, but um, do I have a little leeway to go PG 13? Oh, you can go as dirty as you want here. We are oh, sinners hey, after all. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so in, in borderlands two, um, Salvador, you know, when we record, you've got, you, you, you just say your lines, you don't, you don't have to match anything, you know, so you'll do different takes of the same line over and over and over until the director is like, oh, that's the one I like, or I like those three, we'll figure it out later kind of thing. Well, anyway, so we're doing my lines and there's a point of jubilation where Salvador is mm -hmm. gun zerkering. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, anyway, let me tell you this story real quick, then i got to ask you a question. Anyway, um, so uh, he, um, 
he's, he's sitting there and he's gunzerkering, and the line is, it's like having three dicks. <laughs> we all thought it was very funny. And um, uh, anyway, they cut it out of the show. It never made the, the game. And we're like, well, that's too bad. And so anyway, I would tell this story, you know, at conventions and stuff. Well, I'm at a convention in uh, Miami, Florida a couple years ago. And, and um, this guy walks up and he, hands, he goes, hey, I made this for you. And he hands me this piece of wood. And it's a cutout of uh, Huang, a character I played in Darker Than Black. And I was like, well, it's like a wood burn. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And, um, and all of a sudden he goes, well, I made this for you, too. And he pulls it out. And it just, it's, a, it's a wood burn. And it says, it's like having three dicks. I was like, oh, thank you. Great. I'll just hang this in my living room. <laughs> so, hey, I've got a seriously quick question for you. Ask away. Um, what are the, how long do we go? And is, is there a possibility of splitting this into two segments or, or does that not happen? Oh, no. If you, uh, if you need to go, we can always do this another time. Well, I, I tell you what, if I can go, I'd love to, I mean, I'd even, I could, do it later on tonight, but I just I've I've got this guy bugging me, and it's a it's a business thing I've got to do. Oh no worries, you go ahead and go. Um, we'll be waiting for you. There's no rush on coming back if you're really busy. We understand. Well, no 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 no, but I really am enjoying this. So um, let's uh, shoot me an email. Let's reschedule it again, and let's do it another time, and let's pick up where we left off. Can we do that? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm so sorry to all the folks out there, all you sinners. Thank you for your understanding. This is a uh, a work-related thing I've got to do, and um, I'm getting pinged from all sides. <laughs> it's so, no worries. It was an honor to have you, and we'll see you again. Well, let's let's definitely do it again. I'm serious. Just call me up when we're rescheduled and maybe do a, a pre- or post-Thanksgiving one. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, and uh, love you guys. And go check out PC Cowboys and Big Bad Mama San and – perfect calm when it comes out see ya they're my selfish plugs there <laughs> bye. all right bye bye bye